Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 69th year of the Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance. And we are pleased to welcome our master of ceremonies, a man who has a rich history here at the Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance. He literally, he literally grew up attending this event with his legendary father, Phil Hill, America's first world champion in Formula One racing. And he's a son who followed his father's passion for racing and love of cars. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Derek Hill. Well, hello everyone, hello, and good afternoon. Oh, what a car, and what an entrance. I love making these entrances. I want to thank David and Aaron Eichenbaum for bringing me up the ramp in their beautiful 1964 Alfa Romeo TZ1 Zagato Coupe. What a stunning car. So ladies and gentlemen, please now give a warm welcome to the chairman of Pebble Beach, Concord d'Elegance, Sandra Button. Sandra has played a pivotal role in this event for more than three decades and is now celebrating her 17th year as chairman of the Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance. Her leadership and commitment to automotive elegance and integrity is recognized worldwide. Sonder is arriving in a 1931 Bentley 8 liter Vandenpla Tour owned by Daniel Selecki. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandra Button. Not the easiest exit, but she did it. She, a real car lady, as you can see. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. What a beautiful car. The Concorde d'Elegance is not a contest of speed, but one of elegance. The setting could not be more spectacular for the 69th year of the show, and it could not be more competitive. On display, we have the Bentley Centennial, Zagato Centennial, Bugatti Type 59s, and historic hot rod cover cars. In all, we have over 214 cars and 16 countries represented. If you're posting your favorite snapshots from the show on social media, be sure to use the hashtag Pebble Beach Concours and Pebble Cars. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge all of our viewers around the world streaming the event live on the Pebble Beach Concord YouTube channel. Welcome. As always, the Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance is fortunate to have a very accomplished group of men and women serving as honorary judges. They have been busy this morning walking around their designated groups of cars, selecting today's winners. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the ramp a distinguished group representing many countries in automotive backgrounds.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the welcome with Chris Bach from Nevada City, California, Pebble Beach Concord Elegance Chief Judge. Alfonso Albeza from Franklin, Tennessee, Senior Vice President of Global Design Infinity. Akim Anscheid from Berlin, Germany, Director of Design, Bugatti Automobiles. Valentino Balboni from Ferrara, Italy, Lamborghini Research and Development Test Driver. His Highness Rana Manvendra Singh Barwani from Indore, India, Curator of Cartier Concours India. Klaus Bischoff from Wolfsburg, Germany, Executive Director of Design, Volkswagen. Michael Bach from Stuttgart, Germany, former head of Mercedes-Benz Classic and CEO of the Mercedes-Benz Museum. Mitya Borkert from Sant'Agata Bolognese, Italy, head of design Lamborghini. Philip Brabeck from Herndon, Virginia, president Audi America. Moray Callum from Ann Arbor, Michigan, vice president of design Ford Motor Company. Ian Cameron from Munich, Germany, former design director for Rolls-Royce Motor Cars. Wayne Cherry from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, former vice president of design, General Motors. Miles Collier from Naples, Florida, founder and benefactor of the Revs Institute for Automotive Research. Robert Devlin from San Francisco, California, author on two books of this event, Pebble Beach, A Matter of Style, and Pebble Beach, The Art of the Poster. Stefano Domenicali from Warren, Michigan, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Automobili Lamborghini. Wolfgang Egger from Germany, Global Design Director, BYD. Jim Farley from Dearborn, Michigan, President, New Businesses, Technology and Strategy, Ford Motor Company. Fabio Filippini from Tokyo, Japan, internationally recognized car designer and design strategy advisor. Jackie Frady from Reno, Nevada, President and Executive Director, National Automobile Museum, the Hera Collection. Tom Gale from Bay Harbor, Michigan, former designer at Chrysler. Ed Gilbertson from San Francisco, California, Chief Judge Emeritus of Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. Ralph Gilles from Auburn Hills, Michigan, head of design, Fiat Chrysler. Fabrizio Giugiaro from Turin, Italy, Chairman Giugiaro Architettura. Adrian Hallmark from Crewe, England, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Bentley Motors. Joseph Henricks from Dearborn, Michigan, President, Global Operations, Ford Motor Company. Kevin Hunter from Newport Beach, California, President of Toyota Motor Corporation's North American Design Studio. Michelle Jacques Paganetti, I hope I got that right, from Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Global Interior Design Director, BYD. Derek Jenkins from Newark, California, Vice President of Design, Lucid Motors. Sang Yup Lee from Seoul, South Korea, Senior Vice President and Head of Design Center, Hyundai Motor Company. Glenn Munger from Bainbridge Island, Washington, Chief Honorary Judge and former co-chairman Pebble Beach Concord Elegance. Glenn will be transitioning into the Chairman Emeritus role and hands the baton of Chief Honorary Judge to Stephen Brower from St. Louis, Missouri, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Hunter Engineering Company. Next year he begins his new role as Chief Honorary Judge. 
Dave Merrick from Tokyo, Japan in Los Angeles, California. Executive Creative Director, Acura. Nick Mason from London, England. Le Mans race driver and Pink Floyd drummer. Joachim Moss, Principality of Monaco, Formula One driver for Porsche and Mercedes-Benz. Dr. Tom Matano from San Francisco, California, over 30 years of experience in the automotive design industry and known as the father of the Miata. Kim McCullough from Mawa, New Jersey. Vice President of Marketing, Jaguar Land Rover, North America. Torsten Muller Otvos from West Sussex, England. Chief Executive Officer, Rolls Royce Motorcars. Gordon Murray from Surrey, England, known as the father of the McLaren. Shiro Nakamura from Kanagawa, Japan, former Chief Executive Officer, Nissan Motor Corporation. Dan Neal from Raleigh, North Carolina, Carolina, Pulitzer Prize winning automotive critic, Wall Street Journal. Dr. Andy Palmer from Gaten, England, President and CEO, Aston Martin. Christian Philipson, Principality of Monaco, International Automotive Design Consultant. Joel Piaskowski from Birmingham, Michigan, Global Design Director, Ford Motor Company. Merrick Reichman from Gaten, England, Executive Vice President and Chief Creative Officer, Aston Martin. Frank Saucedo from North Hollywood, California, Director of Advanced Design, General Motors. Stefan Seeloff from Crew England, Director of Design and Mulliner Coach Building, Bentley Motors. Michael Simcoe from Warren, Michigan, Vice President of Global Design, General Motors. Giles Taylor from Munich, Germany, Design Vice President and Chief Creative Officer, China FAW Group. Freeman Thomas from Westlake Village, California. Formal, former Global Design Director, Ford Motor Company. Franz von Holzhausen from Los Angeles, California. Chief Designer, Tesla Incorporated. Jay Ward from Marinda, California. Creative Director, Pixar Animation Studios. Ed Welburn from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Automotive Hall of Fame inductee and former Vice President of Global Design, General Motors. Stefan Winkelmann from Molsheim, France. President, Bugatti Automobiles. David Woodhouse from San Diego, California, Vice President of Design, Nissan Group. Kazunori Yamauchi from Tokyo, Japan, creator of the Gran Turismo game series and Chief Executive Officer of Polyphony Digital. And our final honorary judge is Andrea Zagato from Rho, Italy, Chief Executive Officer Carrozzeria Zagato. Andrea is third generation of his family to lead Carrozzeria Zagato since its founding in 1919. We celebrate their 100 year history on the lawn today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again to all of our honorary judges.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big thanks to the honorary judges, making a big effort from coming from all over the world, and we are just so grateful to have them here at the Concord d'Elegance. Now let's jump right into a Pebble Beach tradition, the Parade of Elegance. These cars represent the essence of this competition. The judges look at a car's authenticity, that it has stayed true to its original creation and its mechanical capability, making sure everything works as it's supposed to. And then there is that X factor, that quality judges just know when they see it, the factor of elegance. Now let's welcome back Nick Waller to the mic and share his insight and knowledge as we enjoy these magnificent cars. Well, while we're waiting for the uh, first car of the parade to start, let me give you a brief overview of what we're going to see. It's the most exciting collection of cars I think I can remember seeing here for many years. The first group of cars that you'll see, they'll come over one by one. They're Thomas Flyers. Thomas was a great mark and a great American mark large horsepower, wonderful touring cars. And we're gonna welcome five of these terrific cars that were parked on the lawn. And I hope you enjoy them. After the Thomases, we're gonna have three French race cars, the Ballos. Now these cars are fascinating, beautifully engineered, very successful in their day. And after the French cars, we're going to go and have a little celebration of Bentley. As we know, Bentley are celebrating their centenary this year. And we have assembled probably the finest collection of Bentleys, I think, that have ever been together in one place in the last hundred years. And we're going to see some blowers. We're going to see some race cars, we're gonna see the Speed 6, old number one, number two, and number three, and it's gonna be a fascinating parade of elegance. And I'm really looking forward to it. We're just waiting, and I hope we'll pay, be patient, we're just waiting for the first car to be cranked. These cars are temperamental, as we know. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The first car to cross the ramp in 2019. What a treat. Look at the brass shining in this beautiful sunlight. Could not be better. This is the 1907 Thomas Flyer 460. It's a seven passenger touring. It's owned by John Bertolotti and Aldo Bertolotti in Santa Clara, California. No, it's not. I'm wrong. This, I do beg your pardon, is the 1910 Thomas Flyer K670 Tourabout. It's owned by Evert and Josine Laumann, and it's come all the way from the Netherlands. I think it lives here some of the time. Evert, thank you so much for bringing the car, and thank you for sharing it with us.
And a second Thomas to cross the line, to cross the ramp. Now this is the 1907 Thomas Flyer, the 460, the seven passenger touring. Let's count them, one, two, three, four, five. I think there's room for two more. It's owned by John Bertolotti and Aldo Bertolotti in Santa Clara, California. And it's wonderful, 60 horsepower, driven there, I think, by Colin Fuckmeyer. <laughs> wonderful, the sun glinting off, well, I'm not gonna say. But Colin, thanks so much for bringing the car. Treat to see. Now, I think you did a little bit more polishing. This is the 1909, this next Thomas to cross the ramp. It's a Thomas Flyer K670 flyabout. This is owned by John and Heather Mozart up the road in Palo Alto. And this is the only original 1909 Thomas flyabout in existence, so it's a real treat to see it. Thomas built his first six-cylinder engine to keep, compete with other American manufacturers such as Pierce Arrow and Rolls-Royce, who were exporting many of their cars to America at the time. And these were the height of collectability. Fabulous to see. Thank you so much. This is another 1909 Thomas Flyer. This is a five-passenger touring owned by the Keller family in Petaluma, California. Now that is a treat. Isn't that beautiful red? Set off with the brass. Do you know, this sums up the antique brass era motor car. Fabulous touring car. Thank you to the Keller family. Well, goodness gracious me, last, but by no means least, this is one of the most famous cars in the whole wide world. This is the Thomas Flyer, and this is the car that made Thomas famous. It's the Model 35 New York to Paris race car, owned by the National Automobile Museum at the Harrah Collection in Reno, Nevada. Wonderful wonderful car this won the new york to paris automobile race in 1908 which kate went from new york to paris the long way around 22,000 miles and wouldn't that be a treat to drive 22,000 miles in that i'm not quite sure i'd be up for it as i said before this is the first of the three bellows and we're gonna assemble all three together so that you can take them in. The sights and the sounds of French race cars from the end of the 1919, so it's 100 years old today. These old cars, we need a bit of patience, don't we? And here we go, the second one. And this is the 1920 Ballo, the three liter. Gonna set down there in the middle. Third time lucky with our own George Wingard at the wheel. He's not used to being in third place, but we'll let him off this time. Three ballows that have not been together for many, many years. Fabulous French race cars. So number, the first car in the front, the pale blue car, is the 1919 Ballo Indianapolis car. It's owned by Miles Collier in Naples, Florida. And the middle car is owned by George Wingard. And right at the back there, on the right, is George's two-liter race car. All these cars were engineered by a Swiss engineer, Ernest Henri, 
and he built these. They're fabulously engineered, and it's a great treat to see them. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for bringing it up, and have a happy drive back. Thank you, George. It's been a wonderful treat to see them together. Couldn't have done it without you. We're going to England now to celebrate Bentley's 100th anniversary in some style. Three of the world's most famous Bentleys. Thank you. Three blowers of the four that were built by Tim Birkin. The first one at the front, at your left, is owned by Chip Connor in Hong Kong. It's the 1928 Bentley four and a half supercharged Van der Plas. And it was the very, very first car to be supercharged but with the Amherst Villiers supercharger, which was an idea of Tim Birkin, a famous Bentley boy. In the middle is a wonderfully original car owned by Bentley Motors, and we're very grateful to them to be here. And in the third place is the 1929 Blower Bentley, owned by Ralph Lauren. And thank you to all of the owners for bringing these wonderfully, wonderfully exciting Bentleys that made Bentley's name. And here we have another trio of racing Bentleys. The first to pull up, we go not necessarily in numerical order, but the first car to pull up, funnily enough, is old number two. And in the middle, old number three. And the gray car on the right is old number one. They're known as old number one, two, and three because they were called this by the mechanics who had made friends with the drivers, they made friends with the cars. All of these speed sixes have raced at Le Mans and at Brooklands. They've won at Le Mans, they've won at Brooklands. The two-seater gray car has actually won Le Mans twice. This is a historic moment and something that we really should savor. And we are eternally grateful to the owners to bring them here today. Fabulous cars and a fabulous way to celebrate Bentley's centenary. Thank you so much, gentlemen, ladies, for driving up and sharing your cars with us all. Thank you so much. And that concludes the 69th annual Parade of Elegance. Stunning cars. Now we want to bring up a special car, a 1940 Cadillac Series 75 Fleetwood Town Car, owned by Don Williams. Unbeknownst to his passenger, he is bringing up this year's Lauren Tryon winner. The Lauren Tryon Award is presented to a car enthusiast who has made significant contributions to the Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance and the collector car world. The award is named in honor of a man who served as co-chairman at Pebble Beach for 27 years, Lauren Tryon. He was a leader, mentor, and friend of our event, and above all, dedicated his entire life to the collector car movement. Presenting the Lauren Tryon Trophy is Chairman Sandra Button. I'd like to say a few words about our Lauren Tryon winner, Mr. Bob Cole. When Pebble Beach road races, when they were just in their infancy, Bob Cole was a key player. He raced here. He was involved in organizing, recording, and promoting the races. But perhaps his greatest con contribution came when he overseed the transition of the Pebble Beach road races from here in the Del Monte Forest over to Laguna Seca. 
Bob was on the board of the Sports Car Club of America at that time, and he was designated to oversee the creation of the new track. He and his wife, Ellen, later returned to Pebble Beach to showcase many new great cars, and he served as a longtime judge and a key member of my advisory board. Bob's amateur racing career went on to include several notable successes. He was later a member of the Triumph factory team at Sebring, and he opened his own car dealership, Cole European, in San Francisco, which is still going strong today. In 1978, he co-founded the Candy Store. Bob is a big fan of pre-war British race cars, particularly Bentleys, so it's a perfect year to honor Bob Cole. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you, Sandra, and congratulations, Bob Cole. We are now ready to begin the Class Awards, which signals the next lap in the journey to unveil the best of show. Keep in mind, all the cars here today have been carefully vetted and selected. The cars that roll over this ramp represent the best in their class. Those first in class winners advance to the winner's circle and from there, the judges will make their final selection and the best of show nominees will be asked to come forward. To start us off on the class awards, please welcome Martin Button. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start the award ceremony with class A1, American Antiques. And third in class, we have a 1914 Molin Knight MK Mark 50 Opera Sedan, owned by Ron and Sandy Hansen of Fillmore, California. The Molin Automobile Company was formed in 1904 and continued to make cars until 1914. The company was acquired, acquired a license from Charles Knight and they designed an engine that used modern sleeve valves instead of the noisier poppet valves that were more commonly used at the time and are still more commonly used in most internal combustion engines today. Okay, roll next car. After changing the name, their advertising declared more power more flexibility, more economy, and more silence. And second in class, we have the 1910 Packard 30 limousine owned by Rob and Kim Koretz of Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Packard Model 30 debuted in 1906 and is powered by a T-head, four-cylinder, 432 cubic inch engine with just 30 horsepower. This car was originally owned by Theodore Davis, a collector of Egyptology, who very famously discovered a new Egyptian tomb every year between 1902 and 1914. And first in class for the American Antiques is a 1910 Marmon 32 five-passenger touring owned by Mike and Sharon Silva, Silvera of Minden, Nevada. This is a double winner, ladies and gentlemen. And the 1910 Marmon 32 also wins the Ansel Adams Award for the most desirable touring car of its era. Matthew Adams, the grandson of the late Ansel Adams, is presenting the award. Daniel and Howard Marmon opened a factory in Indianapolis to build their own cars as a subsidiary of the engineering company Nordyke Marmon and Company. It has a 5.2 liter four-cylinder engine that was first, first produced in 1909, the year before this car. It's one of the first engines to incorporate a fully pressurized oil system. This is the third oldest 
existing Marmon in the world. Congratulations, Mike and Sharon Silvera. Looks like we have a fail to proceed in the uh, second antique class, so we will jump quickly to Next. American Classic Open, class C1, and the third in class is a 1929 Stutz M25 LeBaron Speedster, a very pretty car owned by Mary and Ted Stahl of Chesterfield, Michigan. Thank you, Mary and Ted, for bringing the beautiful Stutz. Second in class is a 1930 Cadillac 452 Fleetwood Roadster owned by Kurt Bradley of Orange, Connecticut. On January the 4th, 1930, the New York Auto Show Cadillac unveiled its sensational new engine, a 452 cubic inch V16 designed by Owen Knacker. This car has power assisted brakes and a fully synchromesh gearbox and produces 165 horsepower. Send them up. Thank you, Kurt, for bringing this beautiful car. And the winner of the American Classic Open is the 1936 Cadillac Series 90 Fleetwood Convertible Coupe owned by John Groendijk of Enid, Oklahoma. In actual fact, Cadillac debuted this engine before the Detroit Auto Show at a private exhibition in the Detroit Opera House in January 1930. They produced over 4,000 V16s in several series. And in 1936, just two of these Series 90 convertible coupes were special ordered with these dual side mounts and a rumble seat in the rear. Thank you, John, for bringing this wonderful Fantastic Cadillac Series 90, a Fleetwood convertible. Okay, our failed to proceed is now proceeding on the ramp. And third in class for the European Antiques is a 1903 Mercedes Simplex 1822 Tora owned by Craig and Susan McCaw of Kirkland, Washington. We have another double winner here, ladies and gentlemen. This car also wins the Mercedes-Benz Star of Excellence Award, presented by Mercedes-Benz to the most significant Mercedes on the lawn today. The Mercedes-Benz Benz Star of Excellence Award is presented today by Mike Kunz, the director of the Mercedes-Benz Classic Center in Irvine, California. Looks like we might need a little assistance here, gentlemen. Madam, you don't have to push, it's okay. Come on, boys, heave ho, up you go. Come on, jump to it. This car is the work of Emil Jelinek. He was a distributor for Daimler Motors, and he eventually named the Mercedes cars after his 11-year-old daughter, who was also called Mercedes. He registered the Mercedes trademark in 1902. This is a 1903, and is considered to be considered to be the third oldest existing Mercedes in the world. In spite of its current technical difficulties, these cars are considered to be the most modern cars of their era, with poppet valves and a four-cylinder engine. Sounds like it's going again. Thank you again. Thank you again, Craig and Susan, for bringing the car. A 1903 Mercedes Simplex 1822 Tora. Second in class. <coughs> Sneaked up on me there. 1913 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. A Reuters London to Edinburgh Tora, owned by Stephen Plaster of Lebanon, Missouri. And Steve sitting in the back there. Thank you, Steve. This is one of the very special London to Edinburgh cars, which were built to run from London to Edinburgh with the car locked in top gear only. 
they had to drive the whole way in top gear and the Rolls-Royce far exceeded every other car in the race. And first in class is an amazing car. This is a 1907 Napier 60 horsepower Roy de Belge owned by the Laumann Museum in The Hague, the Netherlands. Also a double winner, this car wins the Montague Bewley Trophy. It's presented in honor of Lord Montague, Edward Lord Montague, and is awarded to the most significant British car on the field today. Montague Napier produced cars from 1898. The first car was built for the pioneer racer Selwyn Francis Edge, who raced them for at least a decade, proving that Napiers could not be beaten. This car has a 60 horsepower, 7.7 .7 liter engine. An incredible, incredible, oh, there she goes. Thank you again, Ava. An incredible thing in 1907. Six cylinder, 7.7 .7 liter engine. Okay, we've had C1, let's go to C2. That's the American Classic closed, and third in class is the 1936 Packard 1407-12 LeBaron all-weather cabriolet. Laura and Jack Boyd Smith, Jr., and the JBS collection of Elkhart, Indiana. 1936 was a good year for Packard, with a total of over 80,000 different models sold, and the Packard 12 was the top of their range with a 7.8 liter V12 engine producing 175 horsepower. Only 682 of those 80,000 cars were Packard 12 chassis. And very few are left remaining today. One of the few that was built by an independent coach builder, LeBaron. Amazingly, that car sold as a very expensive car in its day. It cost $6,290 in 1936 in the midst of the depression. It was also owned by Charlie Chaplin. And you may have seen it in The Godfather and the Betsy starring Laurence Olivier. Second in class is the 1932 Chrysler CH Imperial Coupe owned by David and Teresa Desiree of South Lake, Texas. The CH was fitted with a 135 horsepower eight cylinder engine which made for a very sporty ride for such a small and short chassis car. Other features included floating power, engine mounts with a split V windshield, and each side opening individually. Thank you, David and Teresa, for bringing this beautiful car all the way from South Lake, Texas. One of only four known surviving Chrysler CH crew. But first in class, please give a Round of applause for the 1933 Packard 1006 12 Dietrich Stationary Coupe, owned by the Academy of Art University in San Francisco, California. You may wonder why it's called the Stationary Coupe, and it's a car. In actual fact, that name was given to these cars because the top did not go down. So it's a stationary top. And it's actually quite a fast car, being a 12-cylinder car. Packard dropped the name Twin Six in 1936 and moved to the more modern name Packard 12. This is one of the earlier ones in 1933, Packard 12 Dietrich Stationary Coupe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to Class D Packard Open. And third in class is 1935 Packard 1204 Super 8 Coupe Roadster, owned by Gregory and Sherry Hark of Freeport, Illinois. By 1935, during the Depression, Packard offered four model lines. The medium-priced 120 series that provided the much-needed cash flow for the company, plus three other senior Packards, the Packard 8, the Packard Super 8, and the Packard 12.
This second in class is a 1936 Packard 1407 12 Sport Phaeton owned by Jean and Don Garib of Birmingham, Alabama. Perhaps due to this rather old fashioned style in 1936, it is thought that just five examples were made. And this car is believed to be the final one produced on the 1407 12 cylinder chassis. Thank you again, Gene and Don, for bringing this car all the way from Birmingham, Alabama. And first in the Packard Open Class is a 1934 Packard 1108 12 Dietrich convertible sedan owned by Ralph Murano of Westfield, New Jersey. Ralph is a Packard collector and without exaggeration has dozens of them. The 1108 series is powered by Packard's smooth running L-head V12 engine that developed 160 brake horsepower. <clears throat> Most of the Packard 12s receive factory bodies with less than a dozen bodies by coach builders such as LeBaron and Dietrich. And the best you could get was the Dietrich convertible sedan that you see before you today. Thank you again, Ralph. Congratulations, first in class and well deserve it. Okay, it's time to cross the pond and bring up the British Bentleys. And third in class for the Bentley Centennial three liter, which were the first Bentleys made, is the 1923 Bentley three liter Vandem Pla sports tourer owned by Michael Cotter of Fulham, England. This three-liter chassis 246 is the earliest surviving three-liter team car built by W.O. Bentley to be raced by Georges Ballot. 1923, it was the fastest thing on the road. After the race, it was fitted with a Vanden Plaat touring body, which survives today on the car. Thank you again, Michael, for bringing the car all the way from Fulham, England. Second in the Bentley Centennial 3-liter class is a Bentley 3-liter Harrison Open 2-seater sports. This is owned by a private collection in Switzerland and came all the way from Gustav to be with us today. This very important 3-liter Bentley is the oldest original surviving Bentley in the world today. You are looking at the oldest Bentley in the world. The car was sold to a private customer who was a friend of W.O. Bentley, and his name was Ivor Llewellyn of Monmouthshire, Wales. Thank you again for bringing the car all the way from Gestadt, Switzerland. And first in class for the Bentley Centennial 3 liter is a 1927 Bentley 3 liter model Vandem Pla Open Sports owned by Bob Mockeridge of England. This car has come all the way from the UK to be with us today. This racing 3 liter speed model is the last works entered Le Mans team car that raced in the 1927 Le Mans 24 hours, it was driven by George Dula and Baron de Langer. It was involved in the infamous White House corner crash that occurred in the early stages of the race. It was during the Le Mans race that that car was given the nickname, The Bitch. Third in class for the Bentley Centennial four and a half liter class, the last of the four cylinder Bentleys was 1929 Bentley four and a half Vandem Platora, owned by Tom Hartley Jr. of Swaddlingcote, England. Tom bought this car in the last year and was kind enough to bring it all the way from the UK so we could share it with us today. This was Johnny Green's personal four and a half Vandem Platora. Johnny was a personal friend of W.O. Bentley and a founding member of the Bentley Drivers Club back in 1936.
This car famously lived in Johnny Green's house and was parked behind his sofa in the living room, where I was fortunate enough to see it about 25 years ago. Johnny Green wrote the great book, 50 Years of the Mark. <laughs> Squeaky brakes we have on the 1928 Bentley four and a half, Vanden Pla Le Mans Sports, owned by Dr. Ian Andrews of Harpenden, England. This very famous Bentley four and a half is known for its registration plate, plate YW5758. It's one of the most successful racing Bentleys ever built. Are we having a change of driver here? Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. <laughs> We're having a little change of, uh, yeah. change of costume here <laughs> for Dr. Ian Andrews. That was very kind of him to show his appreciation yeah. for being here at Pebble Beach today in the Stars and Stripes sweater. This car won the 500 miles race at Brooklands as well as the inaugural Brooklands Racing Drivers Club. That's the BRDC race. 1928 Bentley four and a half from the UK. Thank you, Dr. Ian Andrews for bringing it all the way from Harpenden, England. And first in class for the Bentley four and a half liters is a 1930 Bentley four and a half liter supercharged Vandenplar Open Sports, owned by a private collection in Switzerland. The supercharged cars, also known as the Blowers, were built initially to run at Le Mans, and there were 50 of them. This is one of the or original race cars. Thank you again for bringing this car all the way from Switzerland. The Bentley four and a half liter supercharged Van der Pla open sports blow. I'm sorry. The 1930 Bentley Speed Six, old number three Van der Pla Tora is the third in class for the Bentley Centennial six and a half liter class. The six and a half liter cars were the first six cylinder cars that Bentley built. This Bentley Speed 6 is known as Old Number 3 and is the sister car to Old Number 2 and, you guessed it, Old Number 1, which were the last cars to be built on the Speed 6 production line, and both were bodied by Van den Pla. This car raced at the Brooklyn's Double 12 and it averaged 85.6 miles an hour. It also raced at Le Mans, but sadly, after coming off, that means crashing, it dug itself into a sandbank and had to retire. Famously, the driver tried to dig it out using one of the side windshields, but he couldn't get it unstuck. Second in the Bentley Centennial 6.5 liter class is the 1929 Bentley Speed 6 Freestone and Webb Grafton Coupe. William Johnston, off the off of the Off Brothers collection, try saying that when you're drunk, of Richland, Michigan. This Bentley Speed 6 is believed to be one of five Speed 6s with its original co coachwork and the only Grafton Coupe left in the world. Very interesting car with the faux Landau bars on the back. All the way from Richland, Michigan. Thank you, William Johnson, for bringing it today. Congratulations, second in class. And first in class, a 1929 Bentley Speed 6 H.J. Molina open two-seater sport owned by yet another private collection in Switzerland. Bentley Motors chairman and the Bentley Boys team driver, Wolf Bonato, was the instigator behind the sportier six and a half liter Speed 6, which was the development of the already potent standard six and a half liter. The standard six and a half liter had 140 horsepower and the Speed 6 managed to bump the same engine up to 200 horsepower, which was a huge increase back in 1929. 
Bentley was making them as fast as he could sell them. The new model boasted, boosted many upgrades over the old model. This two-seater Speed 6 is just one of 12 open Speed 6s left in the world with its original coachwork still intact. Thank you again for bringing it all the way from Switzerland. Thank you, gentlemen. The last of the Bentley, uh, vintage Bentley classes, the WO Bentleys as they're so affectionately known, is this very original 1931 Bentley 8 litre Van der Platora, owned by my very good friend Daniel Selecki of Capital, Argentina, and here driven by his nephew, who himself can drive this car anywhere. This car is completely original. It's known as the Captain Hewitt Bentley. And if you can see, looking at the exhaust on the side, you're, it's on your side, so you're fortunate enough to see it. It has the most amazing exhaust system. I've never seen another one like it, and I doubt if you have to. The 8 litre was built with many unique features, including the larger 25 gallon fuel tank, which would probably get about 50 miles, maybe. Thank you so much for bringing the car today. Thank you, Danny. Congratulations. Third in class, the Bentley 8 litre Van der Platora. Please bring up second in class, the Bentley 8 litre Murphy Open Four Seater Sports, owned by Craig and Susan McCall of Montecito, California. Just 100 eight liter Bentleys were ever built, and this is the only eight liter Bentley to carry American made coachwork. W.O. Bentley built 100 of these cars in 1931. Yeah, he's, it's not a steam engine, I know it looks like that, but it's, it's running off the ramp a little quick because of the uh, overheating, I think. That was a problem that eight liters had because they had such a huge eight liter six cylinder engine and uh, their radiator really was not up to cooling them unless they were driving at speed, which they were designed to do. First in class, Bentley eight liter is a 1931 eight liter Gurney Nutting Sports Tourer. With us today, the Honorable Sir Michael Kadori of Hong Kong. The 8 litre was basically an enlarged version of the Speed 6 with a new and lower chassis. W.O. Bentley guaranteed that these cars were capable of over 100 miles an hour in 1931, regardless of the coachwork that was on the car. As I said previously, only 100 of these cars were built. They were launched at the Olympia Motor Show in October of 1930. Unfortunately, even though they sold reasonably well, it was not enough to save Bentley, who went into bankruptcy in 1931, and as we all know, was actually purchased on the courthouse steps by Rolls-Royce. Michael, thank you so much for bringing the car today. It's beautiful. 1931 Bentley 8 litre by the most prestigious coach builder of all, on the Bentley's, the Gurney Nutting Sports Tour. After the 1931 bankruptcy of Rolls-Royce, of, of, of Bentley rather, Rolls-Royce took over the company and they started building what are known as the Derby Bentley's, the Derby Bentley's, because the Derby Bentley's were built in Derby rather than Cricklewood. Third in class for the Bentley Derby class is the Bentley four and a quarter liter Park Ward Drophead Coupe, owned by Dr. Mark and Sneon Sinning of New Bern, North Carolina. Of the, four, of the 2,422 Derby Bentleys built, nearly half were bodied by Park Ward, and many of the surviving Derby Bentleys carry examples of this well-made coachwork. Thank you again. 
Mark and Sweenian for bringing the car from New Bern, North Carolina. Second in class for the Derby Bentleys is a 1936 Bentley four and a quarter liter by James Young, Drophead Coupe. This one is owned by William and Kathy Heineke of Bangkok, Thailand. This four and a quarter liter was built in 1936 for Prince Virabongzi, Bangu Baron Banda, Baron, I don't know, something like that, who was better known as a motor racing fan as Prince Bira in Siam. He used the car while he was studying in Cambridge. And the winning car in the Bentley Derby class is the 1939, Derby class, sorry, is the 1939 Bentley four and a quarter Van Voren Drophead Coupe owned by Michel Doré of Lausanne, Belgium. What a beautiful car and what a beautiful color. This four and a quarter liter was one of the last ones made before the outbreak of war. And it was ordered by Baron Robert Genderbein and was the last Bentley chassis to be exported to the continent before the war. This car passed to the Baron's son, the four times Le Mans winner, and along with his Ferrari co-driver, Phil Hill, Oliver Genderbein. Thank you again, Mike Michel, for bringing the car all the way from Belgium. A beautiful four and a quarter liter Van Voren drophead coupe. And our last Bentley class today is the Bentley Centennial post-war custom coachwork class. In 1956, our third place winner, a Bentley S1 Continental Parkour Drophead Coupe was made. This car is owned by George Vola of Schlindelgi, Switzerland. From 1950 until 1959, all Bentleys featured the six cylinder engine that was developed by the factory from its initial four and a half liters to nearly five liters beginning in 1954. There are over 20 different styles of coachwork on these cars from a multitude of companies. But the S1 Continental Park Ward Drophead Coupe is considered by, by many to be the most beautiful. Second in class, we have a 1949 Bentley Mark VI Molina Coupe. This car is owned by Fred and Donna Kritz who live in the Principality of Monaco. Fred Kritz has a very large collection of post-war uh, post coachwork Bentleys, and we're delighted that he would bring this beautiful Bentley Mark VI Molina Coupe today. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Donna. A beautiful coupe. And first in class for the post-war Bentleys is the 1952 Bentley R-Type Continental Molina Sports Saloon. This car is owned by Anne Brockington Lee of the Robert M. Lee Collection in Reno, Nevada. And there's Miss, there's Miss Anne in the car with probably the largest hat I've ever seen. Just 208 Bentley R-Type Continentals were built with a 4.5 liter six cylinder engine. They could turn out 153 horsepower. This car is famously known as Olga because of the license plate OLG, and in fact, was the first of these Continental Fastbacks. Thank you, Anne. Oh, for <laughs> that is an amazing hat. Thank you, Anne, for bringing the car today. Olga, the 1952 Bentley R-Type Continental Molina Sports Saloon.
crossing the pond yet again. We're now going to Class G, which is Duesenberg. And this is a 1931 Duesenberg J. LeBaron, LeBaron Sport Phaeton, owned by the William Lyon family of Newport Beach, California, third in class. This car was first fitted in the late 1930s with a four-door sedan-style coach worked by Durham. This short-style wheelbase Duesenberg J was rebodied after a few months with this LeBaron Phaeton coach work, especially for the 1931 New York Auto, Auto Salon. Look at the deeply raked windshield, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need wipers with that because the windshield is so steep. Thank you again, Bill Lyon and family, for bringing the 31 Duesenberg LeBaron Special Phaeton. Second in class, Duesenberg, 1929, Duesenberg J. Morphy Torpedo Convertible Coupe, owned by Charles Ungurian of Koshokto, Ohio. The most well-known design from Walter Murphy on a Duesenberg Model J chassis is the disappearing top convertible coupe, of which about 25 were made. The disappearing top torpedo convertible coupe with its boat tail rear deck is considered to be the pinnacle of Murphy's work on the Duesenberg chassis. Thank you, Charles, for bringing this beautiful disappearing top Murphy convertible coupe. Look at the tail on that. It's a beautiful style car. And first in class with the Duesenbergs is a 1930 Duesenberg J. Murphy Disappearing Top Roadster by Paul and Cheryl Petrovich of Pebble Beach, California. Paul brought this car all the way from his house, which is about 200 yards away. Downhill. This is also a double winner, ladies and gentlemen. It wins the Classic Car Club of America trophy sponsored by the Joseph Cantori family and presented by the Joseph, Joseph Cantori family. The first owner of this disappearing top roadster was Esther Fisk Hammond, who commissioned this sporty body from her local coach builder, Murphy. Murphy was building bodies in Pasadena, California, when Pasadena was right out in the countryside and a long way from Los Angeles. It's one of only seven Duesenbergs built in this configuration, including the famous Clark Gable and Gary Cooper SSJ two-door roadsters. Thank you, Paul, for bringing this car all the way down the hill. Back across the pond again to good old Blighty for the Rolls-Royce pre-war class. And third in class is a 1929 Rolls-Royce Phantom One Brewster York Roadster owned by the Lehman Collection of Palm Beach, Florida. The York Roadster body, styled by Brewster, is probably the most sporting found on any Rolls-Royce and one of the most beautiful of Brewster's designs on a Springfield Phantom One chassis. These cars were built in Springfield, Massachusetts, where Rolls-Royce had a factory in the 20s and built cars for the American market. The York Roadster has flared spats, doors are curved deeply into the sill, and a short tail with a walk-in rumble seat. Thank you, Sam, for bringing the car today. It looks stunning. Beautiful York Roadster, very rare car, ladies and gentlemen. Second in class for the Rolls-Royce Pre-4 is a 1928 Rolls-Royce Phantom 1 Brewster Derby Speedster. Beginning in 1920, Rolls-Royce built nearly 3,000 Silver Ghosts and Phantoms in their new American factory in Springfield, Massachusetts. And this is one of the last ones in 1928. Although it was built in 1928, it remained unsold until 1931. It's one of only five of these Derby Speedsters built, and it still has its original body. Thank you so much, John and Gwen McCaw, for bringing the car. There he is waving. Thank you, John.
beautiful car, second in class, Rolls-Royce pre-war, a 1928 Rolls-Royce Phantom 1 Brewster Derby Speedster. And coming all the way from the United Kingdom, first in class is 1937 Rolls-Royce Phantom 3 Inskip Special Henley Coupe, owned by Lord Bamford. This is also a double winner, having won the Lucius BB Trophy, sponsored by Rolls-Royce. It's awarded to the most significant and traditional Rolls-Royce on the field today in the style of Lucius Bebe, a bon viant who served among our early judges and was a very important part of this concourse. Presented today for Torsten Mueller Octavus, CEO of Rolls-Royce Motorcars. The Rolls-Royce 4050 Phantom III was the only V12 engine uh, Rolls-Royce ever made. The V12 was well known for its smooth power and being incredibly uh, silent when it's running. You could hardly hear this car at idle. Thank you for bringing it all the way from the UK. Lord Bamford, the 1937 Rolls-Royce Phantom III Inskip Special Henley Coupe. Thank you so much. Our next class, ladies and gentlemen, Mercedes-Benz pre-war and third in class is a 1934 Mercedes-Benz 170 Sport Roadster. This was known as the Model W15 within the Mercedes factory and is brought to us today by Dries Oostlander of Duren, Belgium. In actual fact, ladies and gentlemen, there was a slight confusion there. That was our second place car, owned by Michael and Joni Rich of Pennsylvania. My apologies for the confusion. This is the third place car, coming all the way from Dun Belgium, the 1934 Mercedes 170 Sport Roadster. This car is the work of Hans Nibel, Mercedes technical director, who had taken over from Ferdinand Porsche at the beginning of 1929. It's a very petite, small Mercedes Benz by comparison to most of them. Thank you again, Reese, for bringing it all the way from Belgium. A very pretty little car. And we will jump right ahead to first in place for the Mercedes Benz pre war 1936 Mercedes Benz 540K. Edmund and Rossi Special Cabriolet. This is owned by the Keller Collection at the Pyramids in Petaluma, California. Only built for the wealthiest and most demanding of clients, the Mercedes-Benz 540K Special Roadster was the flagship of their pre-war cars. This car was specially ordered for Barbara Hutton, the wealthy Woolworth heiress and socialite, as a gift for her future husband, Count Kurt, von Haugwitz hagen wegenbogen wagen benken Wentenblow. She remained Mrs. Hutton for obvious reasons. It has several unique features. It's the only 540K that she asked for it to be in a four-seater configuration. It's also the only one that has exhaust pipes coming out of both sides, even though it's a six-cylinder engine and the exhaust on all the rest of them come out on one side. She liked the balanced idea so it has faux pipes on one side. Thank you so much, Anna, for being in the car today. It looks beautiful. A very special and very unique 540K Roadster.
Ladies and gentlemen, we move to European Classic Open. Third in class, a 1929 Hispano Suiza H6C Sauchik Cabriolet owned by Charles and Karen Newberg of Dallas, Texas. This is also a double winner, ladies and gentlemen. This, this car has won the Alec Ullman Trophy. The Alec Ullman Trophy is awarded to the most exciting Hispano Suiza present today. The trophy is named for the founder of the Sebring Races. Ullman was an important contributor to the hobby and to this concourse. Sponsored by Oscar Davis and presented today by Robert Davis. This new Hispano H6 caused a sensation when it was first brought into the Paris Auto Salon in 1919. It's powered by a 6.5 liter overhead cam six cylinder engine developed from the legendary aero engines that Hispano Suiza was famous for. Thank you so much, Charles and Karen, for bringing the car today. It looks stunning. What a beautiful car. A Sauchik Cabriolet, a very rare body on a Hispano Suiza. Please bring up the second in class of 1937 Porsche 853 Glacier Sport Cabriolet owned by Valerie and Aaron Weiss of San Marino, California. This is another double winner. This car wins the Elegance in Motion Trophy, sponsored by Gooding & Company. I don't think I need to tell you what Elegance in Motion means, because when you look at this car, you can see it looks like it's traveling when it's still. Sponsored by Gooding & Company and presented by David Gooding, president and co-founder of Gooding & Company. Porsche was part of the Audi DKW Wanderer and Auto Union Group, which is why it has four rings on the front, one for each manufacturer. This is a short wheelbase model. It was offered to compete with the Mercedes-Benz at the time. Beautiful 1937 Porsche 853 Sport Cabriolet. And first in class, European Open, 1938, Talbo Largo T150C SS Figoni and Falacci Teardrop Cabriolet, owned by Richard and Melanie Lundquist of Palos Verde Estates, California. This Talbo Largo T150C SS was built by the French coach builder Figoni and Falacci in 1938 and is the first of two cabriolet bodies that the company built on this chassis. And it is the only one surviving today. Paul Russell's in the car, and you did a fabulous job restoring. What a beautiful car, Paul. Thank you for bringing it today. Thank you, Richard and Melanie. First in class, European Open. Let's move on to the European Closed Class. The 1947 Alfa Romeo 6C 2500 SS Touring Coupe, owned by George and Sibet Aspar of San Diego, California. Third in class. This Alfa 6C 2500 is one of 383 Supersport models that Alfa Romeo completed immediately after the Second World War was the first model that they produced after the war years. Thank you very much, George and Seabet, for bringing the car today all the way from San Diego, California. And second in class is the 1927 Minerva Type AF LeBaron Sport Sedan, owned by Nick and Shelley Schorsch of Newport, Rhode Island. Minervas were well-renowned in Belgium for their sleeve valve engines. And when the engines were rebuilt, they were known to smoke a little bit until the uh, sleeves bedded in. And so this one looks like it was just recently rebuilt. A beautiful 1927 Minerva Type AF Le Baron Sport Sedan. 
And the winner of the European Classic Clothes Class is the 1937 Delahaye 145 Chaperon Coupe owned by Peter and Merle Mullen of Los Angeles, California. And who should be at the wheel other than Merle herself? This Delahaye 145 was originally built alongside three other open race cars that were owned by Ecurie Bleu Racing Team. It was driven by René Dreyfus and Louis Chiron in the 1938 and 1939 European racing seasons. It was later purchased by the Schlumpf Museum in Millhouse before it came here in 1983. Thank you, Merle and Peter, for bringing the car today all the way from Los Angeles, California. Now we have a special class, ladies and gentlemen, just for Bugatti Type 57s. And third in that class is the 1939 Bugatti Type 37C, Gangloss Delvio, owned by Jeff and Francis Fisher of Palm Beach, Florida. This is one of just 96 Bugatti Type 57s that were completed. And in January of 1939, it was sent to the Carrosserie Gangloff in Colmar in, in Eastern France close to the Bugatti factory in Molsheim. It's a four-seater Stelvio Cabriolet, and it was personally delivered by Jean Bugatti to its first owner. Thank you, Jeff and Francis Fisher, for bringing the lovely Bugatti Type 57C Gangloff Stelvio today. Second in class for the Bugatti Type 57s is the 1939 Bugatti Type 57 Gangloff Aravis, owned again by Peter and Merle Mullen of Los Angeles, California. The Aravis coachwork was named after a mountain pass in the French Alps and is regarded as one of Jean Bugatti's masterpieces on the Type 57 chassis. A beautiful, sleek, streamlined car. Bugatti himself claimed that this car, this actual car, was the most beautiful of all of the 57s built. The silhouette gives the impression that the car was built for speed, and its teardrop fenders that seem to launch the car forward. Thank you, Peter and Merle, for bringing this beautiful car today. 1939 Bugatti Type 57 Gangloff Aravis. Thank you again. And first in class is the 1937 Bugatti Type 57 SC Atalant, owned by a private collection in New York. The Bugatti 57 was built between 1936 and 1938, and they were clothed in a variety of beautiful coachwork. But as you can see, they were all very sporty and very fast looking. These were the sports cars of their day, ladies and gentlemen. 1937 Type 57 SC Atalant. This is about as good as it gets. Thank you again for bringing it, Julio. Julio. We're going to take a break in the awards presentation to celebrate our generous donors. This part of the show is not only fun, it signifies an important mission of the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance, to give back to the community. Your support through direct donations and the purchase of charity drawing tickets has allowed us to contribute more than $27 million to charities. Please welcome again Sandra Button, Chairman of the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance, along with Mr. Bill Peraki, CEO of the Pebble Beach Company, our host today. Wow, take a look at that check. This year, as a result of your generosity, the Pebble Beach Company Foundation, along with the Pebble Beach Company Foundation Phil Hill Scholarships, the Jules J. and Sally Human Scholarships, Boys and Girls Clubs of Monterey County, Kinship Center, Montage Health Foundation, 
Natividad Foundation and Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital Foundation will receive a total of $2,007,788. Thank you, Sandra and Bill, and to all of you for your support. Now, please welcome former host of The Tonight Show and enthusiastic car collector, Mr. Jay Leno. Thank you, thank you. And joining him this year, highly accredited senior automotive appraiser, classic car historian writer. You may have seen him in this segment, Assess and Crest with Donald Osborne on Jay Leno's Garage, Donald thank Osborne. You. Thank you very much, Derek. You know, I think as era of electronic banking, you wouldn't really need giant checks anymore. It just seems rather antiquated to go into a bank with a big giant check like that. You have a I'm giant uh, yeah, I'm not quite phone sure that would work. Uh, to uh, do the electronic transfer with. I don't N know. Now, what are we doing? Are we pulling names out of a hat here? That's right. Yep, what, we are going to give away some uh, great prizes. Let's get our uh, our lottery ticket machine out here. All right. Yeah, come. It's completely automated, as you can see, uh, this year. With yeah, the 20th century theme okay. uh, continuing here, we have a large 18th century... Uh, a gentleman you might recognize him as the bounty paper towel school. guy. There he is. Okay. This so year, are are I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get started with the cars we have What's to give away. What's the car? Go ahead. Sorry. So oh. We got oh. the McPherson students. Oh, Hold on a second. Students. Yeah. Let, let's just take a quick pause, Daniel. The McPherson students were getting high behind the building, but we tracked them down. So <laughs> yeah, here they are. So this Thank year, you. our automotive sponsors have been generous, and we have three cars to give away this afternoon. We've got one who's keen to get up here. But let me first introduce our McPherson students. We should point out that there's always a chance that the winner won't be present, as tickets were sold in advance through Monterey County with local ticket holders supporting their favorite nonprofits. If that's the case, we have four McPherson students ready to accept the prize on the winner's behalf. This group is comprised of this year's Phil Hill Scholarship recipients, and they are joined by the first inaugural recipient of the Jules J. and Sally Human Scholarship, Nathaniel McLaughlin. Jay and Donald, you know all about these kids. Yes, yes I do. We started this like 25 years ago, something like that. These are all uh, young men and women who decided to go into the field of restoration. Uh, they do a f they, it's a four-year program at McPherson College, and many of them get placed at the Classic Center in Germany and with Jaguar and here in America at restoration shops all across the country. And their parents don't break into tears because they're working on cars now because a lot of them get paid pretty good. What do restorers make? 50 to 100 bucks an hour in a lot of 50 cases. 50 to 100 bucks an hour indeed. And yeah. what's more important for, for these guys and, and the girls that they go to school with is the fact that they are young people with a true passion for collector cars. Anybody who worries about the future of this collector car industry and hobby should just meet these folks, make a visit to McPherson College, check it out, and you will see that the passion burns very brightly in young people. And I have no fear whatsoever. For no, no, and each no fear in McPherson either. And each one of them majors in different things. You major in magnetos and ignition, paint and body work, classic restoration. It's really, a, it's, a, it's a real college with a real degree. This is one of those 90-day deals. It's, it's, it's a, a liberal arts school. college right. that gives a full education so that these guys will be not only be able to do the skills that they need, but they'll be able to run the businesses that uh, will provide the restorations for the Pebble Beach in 20 42 and beyond. That's right. When they screw you over on your, uh, on your restoration, you won't even be able to understand how they did it. They're that good. <laughs> well, they look so innocent now. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's now. Well, we hope you all had a chance to purchase lots of tickets from the charity. And it's always fun to have a, a winner present, so let's see who the lucky person well, let's is. Let's tell them what the car is. Well, the first prize up is a 2019 Mercedes-Benz a2200 formatic sedan. Okay. Donated by Mercedes Benz USA, benefiting the Boys and Girls Club of Monterey County and Montage Health Foundation. Representing Mercedes Benz is Rob Moran, Director of Corporate Communications. All right. And the winner is from Macomb, Minnesota, Florin. Bleeby? Bleeby? Blebay. Florin Blebay? Blebay, Florin Blebay, are you here? Here. Is she here? Come on up. Florin, come on up. Come on down. 
From Dicker and Dicker of Beverly Hills. Oh, is this her? Is she going to have a say? Is she here? Come on up. It's no, he, oh, Florin. Guy. Oh, Florin. Florin. Okay, he should win just Lorraine, come this name. way. Come on come up Come this here. way, yes. Come on up here. Don't climb over the pyrotechnics. That Bad was a real things chance. can happen. You know, he came here today in an Uber hoping he would win so he could drive home. So it's, it, it's a long shot, but it paid off. Exactly. Okay, here he goes. Come on up here. I think this may be his very first car, I understand. Again, not the fastest kid in Minnesota. Michigan. Oh, Michigan. Sorry. There we go. Come on up. Hey, there you go. And here's Rob Moran from Mercedes-Benz. And here's Rob from Mercedes-Benz. Do, do you have any identification to prove that you actually are uh, Mr. Florin? I'm just kidding. The FBI will check you later. It is him. From, I mean, from the same town. Excellent. Congratulations. There's a winning ticket. There you go. Oh, here they are. Awesome. Hope you like Congratulations. Red. Here, let's get you in the car. Cool, cool. Congratulations. Whoa. There you go. And who you says get to people go home are never style. here to win these things? He's going to Minnesota. Michigan. Oh, Michigan. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, he, he, perhaps, close he, to perhaps each other. he'll close have to be enough. an Uber driver yeah, with cool. this car. Cool. Well, thanks. There you go. Thank you. He's operating the window on his car for the first time. Excellent. Well done. The next wow. car giveaway is a 2020 Infiniti QX50 donated by Infiniti USA, benefiting Kinship Center and Natividad Foundation. Representing Infiniti is Alfonso Albeza, Senior VP of Global Design. You know, that's a sign the recession might be coming when the winner is actually here. You, know? <laughs> you need to make sure he was okay, here. Okay, here the we car. go. Spin it again. Donald will reach in. All right, All right there we go. And let's see. Reach deep because the uh, really deserving winners are deep oh, in God the barrel. Florin won again. <laughs> <laughs> no. The winner is from Campbell, California, Adam Piper. Adam Piper, are you here? Adam Piper. Adam Piper is the winner. Adam is not here. Adam going once. Does it say he's... Uh Adam going twice. He did not say whether he will or will not be present, so we'll For the third and the last time, Mr. Adam Piper? I guess one of our McPherson students actually gets He wasn't to in the ride. car with Florin, was he? No. He wasn't in the car with Florin, no. All right, well, we'll so. find him. Okay, well, yeah, anyway. Well, I don't think he's here today. He's uh, not here? Do no, do? I don't think. Well, we're going to put one of the McPherson students into this beautiful car. Uh, it's your First choice, actually. Line. If you'd like to stay on stage, it's totally up to you. you to totally up to you. You want to call him? Oh, uh, we could. Well, I don't think yeah, we have time for calling. Okay. Yeah, they told All us right. we're not going to do good. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, Adam won. And Zach from McPherson has announced he will take the car. Taking the car for Adam Piper will be no. No, no. Yeah, we, we, we're going to let him stay up on stage. Oh, but thank you, right. Infinity, and thank you so much. And uh, Adam is going to be really, really happy when he Sorry hears about, about that. this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. But it's a beautiful car. Thank you, Alfonso. Thank you. Thank you, Alonzo. Thank you very much. What's our third car? Third car is a Genesis G90 rear-wheel drive 5.0 Ultimate. All right. Mm. Donated by Genesis Motor America, benefiting Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital Foundation. Representing Genesis is Manfred Fitzgerald, Executive VP and there Global Head of Genesis Brand. There we go. Hey, good, good to see, see you. you too. We meet here every year at the same yeah, time. <laughs> Funny how that works, exactly. <laughs> All right. Adam Piper. Oh, this will not be right. From Clayton, Indiana, David Johnson. Is not he present. He said, I will not be present. That's a <laughs> cocky guy. Isn't it? Exactly. Look, I'm not even going to show up, and I want to win. All right? I know the car is mine, well, so David why Johnson's show up? Johnson's not here, but his car is here. What is that? Oh, that's very <laughs> kind of you, sir. You're no, too kind. David Johnson is not here, but he well, has David Johnson is not here. Um, Talk about anticlimactic. All right. There's probably well, about you. how many other David Johnsons thank are thank out there? Thank you for the wonderful car. It's a beautiful car. Very nice thank donation. You. Really a beautiful oh. car. Now, do they do they charity? Yes. Okay. 
Well, thank you, Genesis, uh, for your very kind donation. David Johnson will be thrilled. You may exit the stage. Thank okay. you. All right, we're going to do something now we do every year. Um, you know, Don Donald and I do the TV show, and my garage is not open to the public, but every year we do a, a charity thing where people make a donation, and uh, we give a tour of the garage. And 100% of your donation goes to... Uh, the Boys and Girls Club. We don't deduct for expenses or handling, or, you know, paying people postage. to do things. Post nothing. It's a hundred percent of your nation. We've made just about uh, eight hundred thousand dollars in in garage tours for the Boys and Girls Club. So it's done really well. We're going to try and get to a million. We used to bid it up until a thousand, three thousand, but we thought one day we got a bid for three thousand dollars. Well, let's hold it there and see how many different tours, we, how many different people we can get to kick in $3,000, because to, to help the Boys and Girls Club, look, this may keep some smart-ass kid from scratching their key in your car, okay? Your donation could actually turn their life around so it doesn't key your car when you're in getting a slice of pizza somewhere. And okay. every donation, of course, fulfills your heart and your soul. This one fulfills your heart and your soul and the needs of boys and girls and gets you into Jay's garage. Yeah, it's a, it's, and, it's, and it's a lot of fun. We got all kind of, a lot of cars, a lot of steam engines, all kinds of interesting things. Uh, let's start it at uh, three thousand dollars. How many people? For wait, visit we, for two. Let's get some. Come on up here and you. Hey, can visit wait, for two. Visit for two. If everyone can please go yes, around. Come on up. There's one. Okay, if, there's you guys, one. if you guys can walk around. Walk around. Up, around the walk around, around, the around to the edge. Around, around the speakers, the please. Come on up here. How many people would, will give three thousand dollars to help the boys? Hey, you, you in the blue hat. As I said, a hundred percent. And it can be for no any time you're in Los Angeles, Monday through Friday. You don't have to. It's not. We don't say like May eighth, and that's the day you have to be there. It's whenever you have you're someone in town. Up it's right pretty now. informal. Let's see how many folks we have. Let's see how many three thousand dollars we have. Okay, here we go. Here comes some people. Okay. Excellent. Okay, this gentleman here, obviously not in here the fashion go. industry. Okay, Come on good. up, sir. Take your place here. Jay, by the way, can I mention that we have raised with you, with these garage tours, 750000 oh, over 750000 Oh, 750000 seven, seven okay. I mean, yeah, it two is guys amazing, here are very amazing. lonely on the stage. Thank you, sir. Thank you This young lady, come on well up here. Excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, I, jumping in on this one? Uh, thank you, thank you. As, okay. as Jay would say, oh, an attractive person. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> an attractive person. Very good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you for helping out the boys and girls. Do we have some more? Let's get some more so folks up here. Another attractive Who else wants to help? Jane? Another attractive, attractive person, person coming. There. Very good. Very good. And more very good. Hi, guys. Coming. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Oh, Let me because see. Because, of course, the see. garage is filled with beautiful cars, nice so you need to make sure that you're an attractive person. We have done this before. Thank you. Ah, oh, here we go. Thank here we go. Much. I'll cut over this in one of these Jeffrey Epstein If you have not been to Jay Leno's garage, it is phenomenal. How are you? Absolutely phenomenal. Thanks for helping out. Thanks You'll have seen nothing nice like it in the okay. world if you Come are into cars. Some more folks. Let's see how many we got. Donald, and what are we up to so far? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen Four so far. Fourteen Let's see if we can make it to twenty. Is uh, what? We've got fifteen. We have a few more coming up. Sixteen. Sixteen. Anybody else like to help out the boys and girls club? Come on up here, and uh, we have a few more coming up. Help out up. the boys and girls club. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Thrill of a lifetime. Here we go. Come on up. Okay. Truly, this is a once-in-a-lifetime. If you haven't seen Jay's Garage in actually, person, actually, it can be two it times is. in a lifetime. Yeah, actually, it can be a couple of lifetimes. Don't worry about it. Again, 100% of your donation goes to the Boys and Girls Clubs uh, of America. We've got 21 up here on the ramp. Let's see if we can make it to 30 people on the ramp. We've got 21 up on the ramp right now. Huh? Well, let's not push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here comes another gentleman. Come on up, here, sir. Excellent. Okay. Come on up. Well, that's what we want. The guys that have been drinking heavily. Come on up, sir. He has no idea. He Anyone else with up beverages with the boys and, girls club. and other attractive Come on in, sir. people? Come on in, please sir. join us. Get that man another scotch and soda. <laughs> you don't know what he's doing. Okay. Can we yeah, get some more folks? Yeah, here we go. We've, we've got, got a runner. Someone actually running. We've got Look a runner. That. Wow. Okay. Good to see that. Here we go. Yeah, feel Hi, free guys. to bring your drinks and more to attractive stage. people. So Drinks on this side welcome. of the line, we have people helping the Boys and Girls Club. On this side, people saying, screw the Boys and Girls Club. Is that where we are now? Uh, we gotta make, we got to make them feel guilty. The people on this side are saying, I've seen all of Jay's cars on TV. Yeah, Why do I need to TV, give exactly. money to the Boys well, and Girls Club? Here comes the Here we go. Let's see this how many we got. This way you can got. touch them. Let's see how many we got. Excellent. 
Hey, good to no, see we, you. It's very nice exactly. of folks Fantastic. to help out. And, you're, 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 and your donation is 100% deductible. Hey, there he is. Rick Case and gentlemen, this man does the Boca Raton uh, show in Florida every year, the biggest one on the East Coast. So yep. congratulations. Thanks yeah, for helping us out. Rick, Rick Case and out. Rita, there you go. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay, let's see how many. So where are we now? How much have we raised? How many folks do we have? One, two, Anybody three, else four, coming five, up? five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 Well, Donald's 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, tallying it up. We've got 26. Uh, this is giving to 26, a really, really generous cause. I went and toured the Boys and Girls Club of Monterey, and I'm telling you, I wish that all the cities across this country had it. The amount that they are okay. providing got, is an opportunity. More. A place to go for these young boys and girls to get a real education. Are these folks, I think, I think are these they're just really a phenomenal charity, and uh, it's all going to a great cause. They're not coming up today. They're heading for the exits. Okay, uh, so okay. please come up to the ramp instead and help the Boys and Girls Club. It's just about everybody. Oh, here comes some more. Here comes some stragglers. Excellent. Come on up, folks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for helping out. I think we're almost at 80,000. Don't count him, he didn't buy one. <laughs> He's going along as a guest. <laughs> we have 39, Do we, can we make it 40? Can we just round this out and make it 40? Exactly. Who's the, who's the 40th one? one more, that'll give us 120,000. This guy will take two, and yep. he'll take two. Okay, we got another for two, so we got, we got three, three extras. Three, three extras. extras. That's fantastic. So how many is that So all we're together? up to 42 now. 42 altogether. 42. I see 45. Our 45. Arithmetic. There's got to be three more three. people. Do we have three more. We got how one more right that? here. 126. 126. $126,000 raised Folks, for the Boys and Girls Club. Wow. Well done. Thank you very, Let's very much. Them. Thank you so much. Everybody Everyone walk off in this direction, and you'll be guided we by this gentleman right here okay. in the bow tie, and he will collect all of your information, and you will have the time of your lives doing Folks, good thank you very much. We don't mean time. to interrupt the car thank show, you very but, much. you know, this is to help the all boys right, and girls club. It's Let's really kids trying to ramp. get a start in life. You know, anybody here, you've probably been pretty lucky your whole thank life. You very much. And a lot of these kids thank don't you. really get even a first chance or a second chance. So yeah. this, is, this is a big break thank for them. So thank you very much, folks. We appreciate it. Thanks. I'll try to be there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're out of town that weekend. Well, well no, I'll try to be there. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, good. Good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Jay, a big you, thank you, and Donald. What what an incredible honor to have you on the ramp as always, oh, and to raise this kind of money for some great charities. It's what Pebble Beach is all about. Again, over $750,000. A big round of applause for Jay Leno and Donald Osborne, everybody. Thanks. Now let's return to Nick Waller to present the remaining class awards and special awards. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for so many of you wanting to see Gay's Garage. I can assure you, having seen it a couple of times myself, that it is the most amazing collection of cars and motorcycles you will ever see. Now we're moving ahead to Class L1 Pre-War Preservation. And this 1924 Bentley 3-liter Bridges Saloon brought to us today by Andreas Pohl of Marburg, Germany, is one of the most original cars you will ever see. It is built on a three liter, cha on a, uh, it's a three liter built on a 10 foot 10 inch wheelbase chassis with a low compression engine and B-type gearbox, which was specifically meant for the larger coach work. This car was first sold in Sirencester, Gloucestershire where it was built by a small coach builder and general garage. 
They opened their business in 1919, the same year as W.O. Uh, w. Bentley, 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 Bentley built his first three-liter engine. This rare and original Bentley has never been restored, and its interior woodwork and leather is still in wonderful condition, displaying all of its 95 years of use in absolute magnificent style. Thank you so much, Andreas, for bringing the car today. Rainer, we appreciate you being here with the K today. 1924 Bentley 3 liter Bridges Saloon. Okay, second in class for the pre-war preservation is the 1918 Packard 335 Twin 6 Fleetwood Deluxe Town Cabriolet. This car is brought to us today by the Hill family of Santa Monica. And uh, this car was owned by Derek Hill's great aunt Helen. And his father, Phil Hill, loved the car and after Helen passed away, he owned the car for many, many years. Obviously, Helen had a great taste in automobiles, much like her nephew and great nephew would prove to have in later life. Phil Hill knew this car almost all of his life. Thank you so much for bringing the car today. A very, very original and unique, very unique, Twin Six Fleetwood Deluxe Town Car Cabriolet. First in class, an amazing 1907 Renault, an XB Labodette transformable Landolette. Owner Steve and Marilee Hamilton of Washoe Valley, Nevada. This car looks like, I can't even imagine. This is the most amazing car. It was built as a town car in Paris and it was described as being specially prepared for city use in 1907. The car was imported into Switzerland in 1919 and remained there until 2018 when Steve acquired it. He very carefully cleaned it without doing any restoration and it is as you see it today as original as it was in 1907. This is also a double winner being the FIBA pre-war trophy winner which is sponsored by Haggerty and is Haggerty Classic Insurance and is presented today by McKeel Haggerty for the best preserved pre-war and post-war car on the field as determined by a special committee. Stephen Marley, what an amazing piece of history we're looking at today. Thank you so much for bringing it all the way from Washoe Valley, Nevada. And now a very special treat, ladies and gentlemen. We have four amazing race cars. They are the only four 1933 Bugatti Type 59 Grand Prix race cars in existence today. These cars were Bugatti's last hurrah at Grand Prix racing. 1933, these cars raced in Monaco. They raced in the Spanish Grand Prix. They they were never the most successful of cars, and as such, Mr. Mr. Bugatti decided not to race in Grand Prix anymore. One of their most unique features is the wheels, which are called the piano string wheels. Extremely strong and extraordinarily powerful. These cars have come to us from all over the world today. This moment, although they were all built together, they have never been seen together. For over 80 years, they were driven by some of the finest drivers of the day, including Achille Varzi, Tazio Nuvolari, Earl Howe, Robert Benoit, and Rene Dreyfus. And they were all sold by Bugatti to English owners in 1935 and then continued to race for almost all of their lives. This is a really unique moment in the history of the Pebble Beach Concours and something we hope you remember for all time. A huge thank you to all four owners 
for bringing them here today. These Bugatti Type 59s are known as the English Bugattis because after two years of racing, Mr. Bugatti sold all four of them to England where they were raced quite avidly for several years. The car in the front is in the iconic black Ralph Lauren paint that we are all accustomed to and has been in the Ralph Lauren collection for many years. Thank you gentlemen for bringing the only four Bugatti Type 59s in existence today. Go. Okay, let's go, gentlemen. We'll have a slight pause, ladies and gentlemen, while we uh, clean up a little leakage on the ramp. Uh, those cars came from Germany, from England, and two from New York. We're so proud to have them together today for the first time in many years that they've ever been together. Okay, ramp's clear. Let's go with Class L2, post-war preservation. And third in class is a very lovely 1954 Fiat 8V Elaborata Zagato Coupe from Johann and Anhild Lont of Denens, Switzerland. Fiat first showed the new two-liter V8 engine sports car at the 1952 Geneva Salon. The 8V, or Autobu as it was described, was specifically for racing at the time when hotly contested the two litre classes in Italian sports car racing. They called it the 8V because they mistakenly thought that Ford Motor Company had the patent on the term V8, which they didn't. This car is extremely original and looks almost like a restored car because it's been so well taken care of. Thank you very much, Johan and Angel, for bringing the car all the way from Switzerland. Beautiful Fiat 8V Zagato. Second in class is a 1967 Ferrari 275 GTB4 Scaglietti Berlinetta. This car is owned by Oscar Davis of Elizabeth, New Jersey. The car's V12 engine was the first dual overhead cam engine ever used in a Ferrari road car. And this more powerful 275 GTB4 with its four cam motor was identified by its raised hood bulge to accommodate the slightly taller engine with four cams. Thank you, Oscar Davis, for bringing this wonderful car today, second in class, the 275 GTB4 Scaglietti Berlinetta. And first in class for the post-war preservation cars is a 1965 Aston Martin DB5 Vantage Coupe owned by William and Christopher Charples of New York, New York. Also a double winner, this car wins the FIBA post-war trophy, again sponsored by Haggerty Classic Insurance and Historical Vehicle Association, and presented by none other than McKeel Haggerty himself. The Aston Martin DB5 debuted in 1963, replacing the equally elegant DB4 Series 5. The DB5 had over 170 modifications, including a larger all-aluminum, or as it should be, aluminium, 
3.9 litre engine and a new five speed manual transmission. What set the DB5 apart and put it straight into motoring history books was, of course, its starring role in the 1964 James Bond movie, Goldfinger. This is only one of 17 left-hand drive Vantages. A beautiful car in jade leather, matching luggage, it's perfect. And it's absolutely original. The 1965 Aston Martin DB5 Vantage Coupe, owned by William and Christopher Sharples of New York. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to hand the microphone over to my colleague and famed author, Nick Waller. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Well, goodness gracious me, the Ferrari Grand Touring Class, Class M1, and in third place, it's the 1955 Ferrari 250 Europa GT Pinfarina Coupe, Coupe, owned by the Pegasus Collection in Palm Beach in Florida. And what a gorgeous Ferrari this is. It's wonderful interior, beautifully paint work, treat for the eye. Thank you so much for bringing it all the way across the country. In second place, it's the 1960 Ferrari 400 Super America, another pin in Farina body. It's the Aerodynamica Coupe Series 1, owned by Jim Patterson of Louisville, Kentucky. The 400 Super America replaced the earlier 410 model. Each one was specially built to order, and no, none of these were alike. Every single one was different. V12, four liter engine, derived from the 250 GT on a shortened chassis. The first 400 Super America appeared at the 1959 Turin Motor Show, and 25 more were built in the series that followed. And it's a lovely, lovely car, especially on a day like today. Thank you so much for bringing it all the way. Many congratulations. And in first place, the 1960 Ferrari 250 GT Scaglietti Spider California, owned by Lee and Joan Harrington of Bow in New Hampshire. The Spider California was the result of a request from Ferrari's two US distributors, Luigi Kinetti and John von Neumann, who really believed that they could sell a an open car, a convertible version of the 250 GT Tour de France, the TDF. And this was the result. Built in Maranello, mostly sold in America. This is one of the 14 long wheelbase Spider Californias. Beautiful color. What a super color. This is the third from the last to be built. Many congratulations to the Harringtons. We're going to move to the, the Ferrari class that Ferrari does best, the racing competition class. And in third place, it's the 1954 Ferrari 375 Plus Pininfarina Spider, owned by Les Wexner of New Albany, Ohio. Now, this is a very distinctive red for a Ferrari. And Ferraris are often brighter colored than this, but this is a lovely, rich, deep color. These spiders were built for the 1954 Sports Car World Championship. And this was raced in America by Jim Kimberley and Howard Hively. Congratulations to Les Wexner. In second place, it's the 1954 Ferrari 735S Monza Scaglietti Spider, owned by Tom Peck of Huntington Beach in California, and this is also a double winner. It also wins the Enzo Ferrari Trophy, which is awarded to the best Ferrari present here today. And the trophy is named for the maestro himself. It's sponsored by the candy store, 
and was just presented by Joe Brillando. Congratulations to Tom Peck. This car is fresh out of a restoration. The details are wonderful. It's shown here as it raced on the Carrera Panamericana. And thank you so much for bringing it here today. Congratulations. In first place, the 1955 Ferrari 750 Monza Scaglietti Spider, owned by Patrick and Carolyn Otis of Berkeley, California. Now this car has been here before. It raced here in the 50s, driven by three of America's greatest racing drivers, Bill Hill, Carol Shelby, and the man who owned it for many, many years and raced it extensively, Jim Hall. Phil Hill and Shelby drove the car at the Sebring 12 Hours in March 1955, and Phil won this with this car at the Pebble Beach Road Races and raced it extensively for a year later. Congratulations. Thank you so much for bringing it here today. Wonderful, wonderful competition Ferrari with great Pebble Beach history. We're going to move to an Italian mark, the Lamborghini, the Lamborghini Mura class. And in third place, it's the 1968 Lamborghini Mura P400 Bertone Coupe, owned by Fritz Kaiser from Liechtenstein. And this was a very famous car. It is a very famous car. It was filmed at the be beginning of that wonderful film, The Italian Job. It's been restored now for today. And as we see it going over the horizon, we can think of that great film and hopefully you can watch it again. In second place, the 1968 Lamborghini Mura. Bertone Coupe, owned by John and Kim Shirley from Medina in Washington. This car was built for a very famous gentleman, the Shah of Iran, who was a great car collector. In fact, I think he owned three Lamborghini Muras in his time. This one escaped from the Shah's regime and has been recently restored and now lives happily in Washington among some other wonderful Ferraris. John, Shirley, thank you so much for bringing it here today. Congratulations. In first place, the winner of the Lamborghini Mura class, the Mura SV Coupe, restored by Lamborghini Polistorico, and it's owned by a very famous French driver, rally driver, and team boss, Jean Tot from Italy, famous more for his Ferrari escapades, but today driving his own Lamborghini Mura. Congratulations, Monsieur Tot, for bringing the car to here today. And we wish you well in the future. Congratulations. We're moving on to the post-war sports class. And third in class is the 1952 Seattle 208S Motto Spider, owned by Jack and Kingsley Kraut. Now, you may be forgiven for thinking that this is uh, still being painted, that the masking tape is there for, for, uh, to, to protect the chrome work. But in fact, this is exactly how it was presented at its first race in 1952, where they taped up a lot of the, a lot of the gaps and a lot of the detail to make it more aerodynamic. Number 444. Second in class, very dramatic motor car, 
It's the 1966 Ford GT40 lightweight coupe. Owned by Rex and Vicky Myers of Van, Indiana. This is the ultimate Ford racing car that everybody would dream of driving. Really, it was developed by Ford to beat Ferrari, as we know, and famously did so at Le Mans in the 24-hour race at its second attempt in 1966. This car was owned by a privateer owner, Alan Mann, who has entered all sorts of different cars in motorsport in period. Congratulations, Rex and Vicky Myers of Indiana. And first in class, it's the 1960 Porsche Carrera Abad GTL Coupe, bodied by Virenzo e Filipponi. Congratulations to Robert Ingram of Durham, North Carolina. It's a very unusual Porsche, based on a 356 floor pan. This was bodied in Italy and it lightened. It was cut in all directions, five inches lower, five inches shorter, and five inches thinner than the normal 356. Made for a very lightweight sports car and it raced extensively. This was owned by a Swedish driver and it won the Swedish GT Championship twice with the car and out of 11 starts, this car won every single race. Congratulations to Robert Ingram and many, many thanks for bringing it here. We're just gonna pause for a little shop, soft shoe shuffle as we clean the ramp. thinking we might invest in a mop one day, I don't know. What do you think, Daniel? So in the O2 post-war touring class, third in class is the 1955 Lancia Aurelia B20 GT Coupe, owned by Jim Farley of Dearborn, Michigan. The Lancia Aurelia was a, a really revolutionary model. It was designed by the engineer Francesco de Vigilio, and it has a, the Aurelia V6 engine, which was the first production V6 in the world. A very lovely example of the Aurelia. Congratulations, Jim Farley. Second in class, is a very, very unusual and rare motor car. The 1957 Chrysler 300B Buono Coupe Speciale that's owned by Kim and Steven Bruno of Boca Raton in Florida. This car blends European coachwork with American engineering and mechanicals. It was designed and built by Jean Paolo Buono in Turin and it was delivered new to Gianni Agnelli that ordered it, especially in these colors. Wonderful, wonderful Italian-American hybrid, fabulous car. Congratulations to Kim and Steven Bruno. Many thanks for bringing it across the country. First in class, we will not be encouraging drinking and driving, no matter what you have sticking out of the window. This is the 1950 Alfa Romeo 6C 2500 Ghia Supergello Coupe, owned by Jonathan and Wendy Siegel of San Diego, California. These are very unusual and rare motor cars. The one of four Supergello or dual coupes built by Ghia, and it's the only example built on the tubular chassis built by Gilco of Milan. The company was owned by Gilberto Colombo, who later designed and built several special Ferrari and Maserati chassis throughout the 1950s. Fabulous Alfa Romeo, very rare. We love it. Congratulations to Jonathan and Wendy Siegel for your first place.
Well, we're also, apart from celebrating Bentley's centenary, we're celebrating Zagato's centenary with two classes. The first is the pre-war class, and in third place is the 1931 Alfa Romeo 6C 1750 Grand Sport Spider, owned by Linda and Paul Gould of Pauling, New York. And it's presented by Andrea Zagato, the current CEO and grandson of the founder of Zagato, which is a privilege and a treat for us all. Congratulations, Linda and Paul Gould. In second place, a very famous race car, the 1933 Alfa Romeo 8C 2300 Corto Spider, owned by Scuderia Northeast in Stamford, Connecticut. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a Le Mans winner. This one Le Mans, driven by Raymond Sonner and Tazio Nuvolari in the 1933 Le Mans 24 hour race. Congratulations, and thank you so much for bringing it across the country. Andrea, thank you for presenting the trophy. And first in class, the 1932 Maserati V4 Zagato Spider, owned by Lawrence Oriana of Greenwich, Connecticut. And this is a double winner. It also wins the Briggs Cunningham Trophy, which is awarded to the most exciting open car present. And it's named for a great American sportsman, an automobile creator and collector. It's sponsored by Ford Motor Company Design. And it's presented by Joel Piekowski, the global design director of Ford Motor Company, as well as Andrea Zagato. What a team, what a team. This is a V16 Maserati, very, very rare. and. Larry, thank you very, very much for bringing it. It's come a long way, I know. It was in Europe only a few weeks ago, and we're privileged to have it here today. Congratulations. And the post-war Zagato Centennial post-war class in third place. It's the 1956 Maserati A6G 2000. Zagato Coupe, owned by David and Jody Smith of Washington. This is the 12th of 20 examples bodied by Zagato on the A6G chassis. Each one is very different. Some have a double bubble. Some have different grills. This one has a curved roof, not the double bubble. And it was one time a factory demonstrator and it went in the 1956 Millimilia. David, congratulations on your third place, and thank you so much for bringing it. In second place, a very famous Ferrari and an old friend to the Pebble Beach Concours, the 1956 Ferrari 250 GT Zagato Berlinetta Speziale, owned by David and Ginny Sidoric of Beverly Hills. Whoops, there goes the hat. Congratulations, David. This is one of five long wheelbase GT250s, bodied by Scaglietti and Zagato. This one by Zagato, double bubble, as you can see. This car has been here many times, but believe it or not, this is the first time the car has been judged in class. Congratulations, and many thanks for bringing the car up back here once more. In first place, a car which I believe is one of the nicest Zagato body cars ever. The 1962 Aston Martin DB4 GTZ Coupe owned by David McNeil of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's also a double winner. This also wins the Vitesse Elegance Trophy, which is sponsored by the Marlin Automob Automobile Mo Museum. And it's awarded to the car that best embodies the combination of excellence in performance and elegance in design. I can't say it any better. Sponsored by the Mullin Museum, presented. 
Well, it's often presented by Peter Mullen, but not today. Never mind. What a wonderful car. One of 19 DB4 Zagatos. And congratulations to David McNeil. You probably look inside, you might find a floor mat. Who knows? And class off. Uh-oh. The historic hot rod cover cars. There's a familiar face. This is the 1932 Ford Bob Morris Nickel Roadster owned by Bruce Meyer of Beverly Hills, and it's a double winner. It also wins the Dean Bachelor Trophy, which is awarded to the most significant hot rod present. And it's presented by Maury Callum, and it's sponsored by the Ford Motor Company. I hope you took time to see these great hot rods, these historic hot rods, down the field with their covers behind. Thank you, Bruce, for bringing this car today. Congratulations. Go, man, go. In second place, the 1929 Ford Eddie Dye Roadster, owned by Tom Babowski of Pompano Beach in Florida. This is really rather a conservative hot rod, I think. It was commissioned in 1950, built by Gills Auto Body Works in Los Angeles, based on a 1929 Ford Roadster body, and uses a Ford 1932 Ford frame. Everything was welded shut. Great hot rod, very historic. And we're really, really pleased to see it here today. Congratulations. Which means that first in class, the winner of the historic hot rod cover car class is the 1922 Norm Grabowski Cookie Car Roadster Pickup. Basically, this car, ladies and gentlemen, is owned by Ross and Beth Myers of Bayertown, Pennsylvania. This car sums up what hot rods are all about. It's flames, it's open hood, expanding, the, expanding, showing the engine. It's all about fun and drama, and we're very, very delighted that this car has been here today. Congratulations to Ross and Beth Myers, first in class. That finishes our class awards for the of the day, but we have the special awards to present. I'll just hand over to my friend Derek Hill for a small announcement. Thank you, Nick. And that concludes all the class awards. All class winners are now in the winner's circle. We're getting closer to that favorite part of our day, best of show. I just have a little announcement to make. Attention judges, all judges who are the best of show ballot holders, please turn in your best of show ballot into the ballot box within the next five minutes. Please, within the next five minutes, please turn in your best of show ballots. Again, all designated judges, we need your best of show ballots, so please turn them in now. Thank you. And now back to the special awards. Thank you, Derek. The first special award we're going to present this afternoon is the Charles Chain Trophy. Which this year is awarded to the 1925 Lancia Lambda 5th Series Torpedo 
owned by Stan and Merle Bauer of Beverly Hills. Well, well, well. Stan, thank you so much for bringing the car this year. I know we, you tried last year and it wasn't very cooperative, shall we say, but it's great to see it here today. The Charles Chain Award is awarded to the car with the most advanced engineering of its era. And the trophy is named for a former General Motors Vice President of Engineering, who was a great supporter of this Concours, sponsored by Bill and Cheryl Swanson, and it's presented by Bill and Cheryl Swanson. What a lovely la Lancia. Very pleased to see it. Congratulations to Stan and Merle. Great to see you. The next special award is the Art Center College of Design Award. A slightly different car to the car that was here before. The 1967 Ferrari 412P Coupe, owned by MJJV Cars of Rye in New York. The Art Center College of Design Award goes to the car that showed the best use of technology in its era, has groundbreaking style and engineering, and is considered to have had the greatest impact on car design today. I think we can all agree that oh, this car fits that bill. It's sponsored by the Art Center College of Design, presented by Stuart Reed, who's the Chair of Transportation Design at Art Center College of Design. These fabulous Ferraris, only two were built. This is the second and final one, built by Ferrari, campaigned during the entire 1965-67 sports car season and it was raced by Marinello concessionaires in the UK. Congratulations and thank you for bringing this very dramatic Ferrari here today. Hark at the sound. Now this is the Chairman's Trophy winner. It's the 1968 Helmet TX Coupe owned by Andreas Möhringer of Salzburg in Austria. And you may be able to tell that this is a turbine engine car. No petrol in being involved. Very different, very revolutionary in its day. The Chairman's Trophy is awarded to the most deserving car present as selected by our Chairman, Sandra Button. Congratulations. This car, ladies and gentlemen, is the winner of the Gran Turismo Trophy. It's a 1931 Alfa Romeo 8C 2300 Zagato Spider. It's owned by Jonathan Fiber and Heather Burr of Atherton in California. And it's sponsored by Polyphony Digital. The Gran Turismo Trophy is awarded for the most significant car present, which balances both artistic beauty and performance at the highest level and most desired for inclusion in Gran Turismo game. It's sponsored by Polyphony Digital, presented by Kazunori Yamuchi, the president of Polyphony. This year's Lincoln Trophy goes to the 1941 Lincoln Continental Brun Town Car, owned by Marshall Miller of Kansas City, Missouri. The, the Lincoln Trophy is sponsored, funnily enough, by Lincoln Motor Company. And it goes to the most significant Lincoln here present today. And it's presented by Kamal Kurik, the Global Lincoln Design Director. This car was actually designed by Edsel Ford himself for the use of Ford family members, as well as senior Ford company executives. And it was built by Brun, the company in Buffalo, New York which was the last Lincoln to be bodied by that con coach builder. Congratulations, Marshall Minner. Thank you very much for bringing the car today.
the Phil Hill Cup. The winner of the Phil Hill Cup today is the 1929 Bentley four and a half liter blower Vanden Pla, and it's, this is the fourth Birkin blower, and it's owned by Ralph Lauren of New York, New York. The Phil Hill Cup is sponsored by Mark and Sharon Newman, and it's named for that great participant of both the Pebble Beach Concour and the Pebble Beach Road Races. It's sponsored by Mark Newman, and it's presented by Mark and Sharon Newman as well. Congratulations. Please pass on our very best wishes and our grateful thanks to Mr. Lauren when you get back to New York. Beautiful motor car, magnificent Bentley, very fitting. Congratulations. And the next special award is the Tony Harmon Trophy. And it goes to the 1919 Ballot Indianapolis race car, owned by Miles Collier Collections at the Revs Institute in Naples, Florida. The Tony Harmon Trophy is sponsored by the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Foundation. And it's awarded to the most significant open wheel car present today. Hulman owned the Indian Indianapolis Motor Speedway for decades. And he was the one that first said, gentlemen, start your engines. Congratulations to Miles Collier, and thank you so much for bringing this wonderful race car here today. We're just gonna have a little pause in proceedings. Bear with us. I think that's the trouble with having so many great cars at Pebble Beach this year, with just sorting out a few of the final trophy winners. It's a great time to perhaps take in the beautiful scenery.
believe this has been worth the wait. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the winner of the French Cup. It's the 1950 Talbo Largo T26 Grand Sport Roccomoto Barquetta, owned by Ralph and Marion Stadler of Megan in Switzerland. The French Cup is awarded to the most significant car of French origin. Many congratulations to Ralph and Marion Stadler. Beautiful, beautiful car. And thank you for bringing it all the way from Europe. We want to welcome back a special group of students from Stanford University, the Center for Automotive Research at Stanford Award. The Cars Award is presented to the car featuring the most significant period innovation is selected by Stanford students and future technology leaders. Thank you, Derek. And this year it's awarded to the 1921 Bentley three liter Harrison Open two seater sports owned by the Veen family in Switzerland. And as it, we talked about this earlier when it came across the ramp in class, this is actually the first car that Bentley sold to a private customer. Chassis number three, the third Bentley to have been built, and possibly, I believe, it is the oldest Bentley in the world. And it really is a very fitting tribute to W.O. Bentley, to Bentley at Cricklewood, to Bentley throughout the decades. Now, we'd like you just to hold there two seconds. Just stay there two, stay there two seconds. Stay there two seconds. No, sorry, false alarm. You may <laughs> depart. Thank you. No, it's OK. It's OK, thank you. We're good. We're going to pause once more. As I said, soak up the sunshine, soak up the scenery, enjoy Pebble Beach at its very, very best. Once again, attention judges, attention judges, all judges who are best of show ballot holders, please turn in your best of show ballot into the ballot box within the next few minutes. So please turn them in now, thank you.
We're now going to move to the Elegance Awards, and the first of those is the Jules Human Most Elegant Open Car. This year, it goes to the 1929 Rolls-Royce Phantom One Brewster York Roadster, owned by the Lehman Collection of Palm Beach in Florida. The J. Human Most Elegant Open Car is awarded to the most elegant open car present, funnily enough. An open car has no side windows, though it may have side curtains as comparable to a convertible. And it's sponsored this year by the Classic and Sports Car Magazine. And we're very grateful to them, and we're very grateful to the Lehman Collection for bringing this gorgeous Rolls Royce here today. Many, many congratulations. And the winner of the Strother McMinn Most Elegant Sports Car Trophy this year, it's back again. Goodness gracious me, it's the 1956 Ferrari 250 GT Zagato Berlinetta, owned, still owned, by David and Ginny Sidoric of Beverly Hills. This award is sponsored by William E. Chip Connor and Associates, and it's presented by, by our very own Chip Connor. The award is presented to the most elegant sports car present here today. And it's named for a respected automotive, automotive designer, instructor, and historian, who was also the chief honorary judge at the Pebble Beach Concourse. Congratulations, David. Thank you again for bringing this lovely Ferrari. This is the winner of the Gwen Graham Most Elegant Convertible, the 1938 Talbot Largo T150C SS Bigoni and Pulaski Teardrop Cabriolet, owned by Richard and Melanie Lundquist. The Gwen Graham Most Elegant Convertible is named for the woman who was involved in founding the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance, Gwen Graham, and it's sponsored by Lalique North America, and it's presented co-presented by James Munn, the president and CEO, and Scott Ridder, the co-CEO of La Ligue, who we are very grateful for their generous trophies that we have today. Congratulations, Richard and Melanie Lundquist. And the winner of the JB and Dorothy Nethercut Most Elegant Clothes Car, it's back again, the 1950 Alfa Romeo 6C 2500 Gear Super Jello Coupe. It's owned by Jonathan and Wendy Siegel of San Diego. The trophy is named for the couple who won our top award, the best of show, a record setting six times. JB and Dorothy Nethercutt established the standards of which we adhere to today. Congratulations to Jonathan and Wendy Seagull of San Diego. Thank you again for bringing this beautiful Alfa Romeo. That concludes our special awards and our elegance awards, and we're now going to have a, another short pause while we gather up the ballots for best of show. So bear with us for the culmination of the 2019 Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance.
Mr. Pollock, Mr. Pollock, our chief class judge, Mr. Pollock, would you please turn in your ballot? If Mr. Pollock hears this, please turn in your ballot. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that out of respect to the owner and also to give everyone a good look at the best of show car, the ramp area will remain clear and will be reserved for the best of show car only. After the official photos are taken, media crews will have a chance to get photos and interviews with the best of show car. We really appreciate your help on this. Let's get started. And now I would like to bring back our chairman, Sandra Button, with the list of nominees. The best of show ballots have been collected and the best of show nominees have been assembled. To my left, you can see those truly elegant cars from which the best of show will be identified. The nominees are The 1931 Bentley 8-liter Gurney Nutting Sports Tour, owned by Richard and Melanie Lundquist. Oh, sorry, owned by Michael Cadori. Sorry. The 1938 Talbo Lago T150 CSS Figoni and Filashi Teardrop by Richard and Melanie Lundquist. The 1936 Mercedes-Benz 540K Erdman and Rossi Special Cabriolet, owned by the Keller Collection. The 1962 Aston Martin DB4 GT Zagato Coupe, owned by David McNeil. The 1962 Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one best of show, and to reveal what car and owner will take home that coveted title and honor, we turn to our chairman, Sandra Button. Sandra, may I have the envelope, please? The 2019 Pebble Beach Concord Elegance Best of Show winner is the 1931 Bentley 8 liter Gurney Nutting Sports Tour owned by Sir Michael Kadori from Hong Kong. Congratulations. Present the Best of Show trophy and ribbon are Bill Paraki, CEO of Pebble Beach Company, and Sandra Button, Chairman of the Pebble Beach Concours. Oh, you can go, you can go back. Yeah, we're going to do you last after the other awards. Thank you, Richard.
Congratulations again. In addition to receiving the Best of Show Award, we have some additional gifts for you. Presenting a beautiful Rolex watch, please welcome Luca Bernasconi, President and CEO of Rolex, along with Tom Christensen, Rolex Ambassador. Okay, the next award, presenting the gift certificate for a photograph of the best show car will be mounted in a custom leather portfolio from Michael Furman of Coach Built Press. And finally, presenting a celebratory bottle of Dom Perignon is Julia Fitzroy, Business Development Director of Dom Perignon. A special thank you to each of our sponsors for their wonderful gifts. Now let's break out some champagne. Congratulations again to our Best of Show winner and all other award winners today. Once again, the stage is reserved for the winning car. We appreciate your help in staying clear of the ramp area. If you want to view the show again or share it with your friends, simply go to our channel on YouTube, where our live stream will continue to be available. And look out for our upcoming one-hour special on Motor Trend Television Network in just a few weeks. Thank you again to the Pebble Beach Company and Bill Faraki for their hospitality. We want to thank our sponsors, our participants, and our audience for joining with us to celebrate these great cars. Don't forget to update your 2020 calendars as next year the Concours will be held on August 16th, the third Sunday of August. We look forward to seeing you then for the 70th annual Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. Drive safe, everyone.
Yes, 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 they are. Thank you.